production for Panther Sports Talk is brought to you in part by the following supporters of WEIU. Welcome to a season opening edition of Panther Sports Talk right here on WIU. I'm your host, Rich Moser, and all football season long, it'll be new EIU head football coach Kim Dameron. So, Coach, welcome to, we talked about it on the way over here, your first official coach's show. So, you've been here for now, I guess, six or seven months. You came in in January. How have you made the transition so far more to the head coaching role because you're not new to Eastern Illinois? Right. Uh, <laughs> coming to Charleston was the easy part. Um, it's been uh, really fun. Uh, we've had a great time. Uh, putting a staff together and getting to know these kids and uh, really feel like that uh, it's been a pretty pretty easy transition to be quite honest with you uh, you know obviously the tough part's going to be when we when we uh, kick it off against Minnesota but uh, we're excited about it and uh, you know it's it's really been fun now for you for people may remember you were on coach Spoo's staff here in 2000 came in as the defensive coordinator spent that season here but kind of helped turn the fortunes of the program around at that time. They had not had a great year in 1999, and you guys came in in 2000, were able on the defensive side of the ball to kind of change some things up. On the offensive side of the ball, the young man came, named Tony Romo right. came in. Yeah, and that that helped, too. That helped a little bit <laughs> on the other side of the ball. But Charleston kind of has held a special place for you, and I know you kind of always looked at, at this job as maybe a potential to come back as a head coach if it was open. Uh, most definitely. Uh, it, it was um, – it was a magical year in 2000. Uh, Tony Romo came of age. Uh, we had some young freshmen and some older players that came together uh, and really put a good defense together. We ended up winning, I believe it was eight games, and uh, we got beat in the first round. Uh, Montana kind of uh, <laughs> didn't, they weren't real hospitable when we went to Montana, but it, it was a fun year. And I uh, got to know Roy Whitkey very well during that. And, of course, I had known Roy and John Smith and those guys from before when we had coached against them. Uh, I'd coached against Eastern at Murray State and also at Southwest Missouri. So, you know, there was um, – uh, that was a fun time. And But you're right. I've always had uh, my eye on this job. Uh, and this is a, a special place uh, to not only myself but also my wife. We got married here. So it's um, it's like coming home in, in, in effect. And so, um, you know, we're excited about being back. Now, I wasn't here, so we're going to give you a chance at revisionist history here if, if you want. <laughs> People kind of told me the first game you ever coached, and if, correct me if I'm wrong here, is you guys played Indiana State. You're coming off the 2-10 and ten year. Mm -hmm. They took the ball, drove down the field, 16 scored. plays. They went 16 plays, they and they scored a touchdown. They said what people have told me is you kind of saw what you needed to see there, and the season kind of for you as a defensive coordinator and for the fortunes of the team – changed after you brought those guys to the sideline. Can you, you remember I what do. you may have told those guys? I, well, basically, I told them that, uh, you know, we had to quit playing uh, scared. We had to uh, cut it loose, and we had to uh, change a little bit schematically uh, on some things that they were doing. But big thing was we just had to uh, go play with some fire and some intensity. And, you know, and, and plus it helped that, uh, you know, I think they, if, I, if my memory serves me correctly, the offense might have taken the ball and went and scored <laughs> and, and tied the game. So, but, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was a long first drive. And, but, you know, it, it wasn't, you know, the first time I'd ever coached a defense. So uh, those kids came over and, and we had a great conversation and they went out and we played pretty well the rest of the night. Now, you're a defensive coordinator by trade. You moved into the head coaching role. You have a young man, Kane Walmack, who you've known his family for a mm -hmm. long time, known him for a long time. He's your defensive coordinator. Have you kind of let him run the defense, or do you kind of have your, your fingers on it a little bit? Because I know it's got to be hard to step away from that entirely. Well, it is, and, and you don't ever – you know, I, I want to be involved in all three phases of the game. Um, and, and the way that I'm involved offensively is that I look at it from a defensive standpoint, and sometimes I'll say – things to Greg because Greg and I have known each other for a long time as well as coach Marcuson and coach Nutt and you know and so you know it's more like a suggestion thing or hey here's what I see or something like that or here's where they how they should react things like that uh, but defensively I've really stepped away on purpose because two reasons one I had great faith in Kane because I know what kind of person he is and I wanted to see what he would do especially in the spring and I was very pleased with with the package that he implemented and and um just how uh, he and the other coaches on defense uh, uh, reacted to each other and how the kids reacted to them and all that. And so I've basically uh, taken a step back 
on purpose and really haven't felt like I needed to interject much. I still go in, we talk about things, you know, if I see something that, hey, tell me exactly what we're telling him here. Tell it, you know, or, or that type of thing, or here's how we've done it in the past. Maybe it's a little simpler this way. But other than that, this is Kane Womack's defense. Actually, it's the player's defense, but it's, it's Kane's package. And, and um, you know, that's the one thing that there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat as far as defensively. And so I want him to be able to call a defense that he's most comfortable with and that these kids are most comfortable with. I didn't want him, everybody to have to come in and learn my system. It's easier for me to learn what they're doing. Now, when you talk about that on the defense side of the ball, we'll stick with that right now. You have a lot of veterans coming back. I think a lot of times the, the amount of veterans that came back on this defense was overshadowed by how good the offense was last mm -hmm. year. Everybody talked about a Jimmy Garoppolo and an Eric Lohr and even some of the other guys we'll mention here in a few minutes. But the defensive guys, they probably kind of played a little bit with a chip on their shoulder and were probably – when they saw that you have a defensive pedigree, we're, we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. But are there a couple guys that you've seen, either veterans or newcomers, that you kind of maybe think will maybe flourish in this type of defense that you guys have? Well, uh, yeah, there's several, actually. Um, you know, for one, Rob Haynes is going to flourish. Uh, Rob played basically a 4-3 Mike linebacker last year and was basically in the middle of the field, and he did that. But we're moving Rob around. Rob's a heck of a pass rusher. And so uh, we're moving Rob around quite a bit, and to put him in position to – uh, really take advantage of what he does best. Uh, also, you know, uh, Kamu and, and Adam uh, Gristick are, are inside backers. They're both very smart, very, in, uh, very instinctive. Uh, and so, you know, we've kind of, we've put those three guys on the field together in a little bit of a different uh, situation than what they were just last year. I think that the guys who are really going to flourish, though, are the Dino Fontes and the Fedney Del Fontes of the world. The guys, uh, you know, that and, and Laquise Taylors and, and those kind of guys up front because we're not going to just sit still. We're not going to line up in 4-3 in and play just quarters and, and let them uh, find out where we are all the time. Uh, they're going to have to come find these guys. And so, uh, you know, I'm excited about also, you know, the, uh, uh, the back end, too. Uh, you know, I mean – Jordan Wycliffe's a heck of a football player and, um, you know, very instinctive. And, you know, he, had, he made uh, quite a few interceptions a year ago. Uh, we're trying to put him in the same situations now uh, coverage-wise to where he can make plays. You know, guys like uh, Vince Speller have come along. Pono Choi has come along. Uh, we've got a young freshman, uh, uh, Bradley Dewberry, that we're excited about. And then, of course, at the corners, uh, you know, we're not just going to be off kind of zoning up all the time. We're going to play a lot of press stuff and – and so we're going to be a lot more diverse, maybe. And I think that plays into what our kids do best. Um, it, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a fun defense to play in. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to challenge you on all three phases since you want okay. to be involved in all three. We <laughs> talked about it on the way over here. We'll go into special teams, and that's going to be an area of, of not necessarily concern, but it, it's kind of a question mark for you guys mm -hmm. going into the season. Not so much that the kids can't do it, but the kids that you have out there, some of them this is going to be their first time playing in a college game You've right now penciled in Cody Edwards a red shirt freshman as right. a, the punter and it looks like maybe the freshman Nick Bruno mm -hmm. as the kicker so as a coach you've got to have a lot of confidence I guess so far in those guys to be able to put them in that situation well um you know to be quite honest with you if you're going to play freshman you might as well do it in your first year <laughs> so uh but you know they came in and they and, and they've done a great job and they've won the job and uh you know we we signed Nick Bruno and and um uh, he's come in and, and been what we expected him to be. He's got a good, strong leg. He does a nice job getting the ball up quick. Uh, and so we're going to let him handle the uh, uh, field goal and extra point duties. And Taylor Kerr will be our kickoff guy. He does an excellent job with that. Uh, so far in practice, he's been really, really good at placing the ball and also kicking it deep. And then, uh, you know, with Cody Edwards uh, getting back there and punting and, and uh, for the first time, you know, it'll be – Something that I feel very confident in his ability to get the ball off quick. Uh, and uh, he's put a lot of work into it. And so I, I have as much confidence in those guys uh, without seeing them actually do it in a game as I can, as I can have. And, uh, you know, also A.J. Hantak, our deep snapper. You know, he, he got some time last year and then got hurt. Uh, so, uh, and he's done an excellent job uh, all for fall camp. The, the, the biggest questions for me, though, is really more so the um, – the, the coverage units, uh, how we're going to cover punts, how we're going to cover kickoffs, who's going to be the playmakers that we send down to do that. Uh, and a lot of that falls on defensive guys, obviously. And then also, you know, our kickoff return guy and, and how that's going to be. I, 
uh, and our punt returner. Of course, our punt returner, I feel pretty good about. I mean, he, he, I think he led the country last year. So all we got to do is not mess him up. But, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're excited about Shepard, you know, being back there and return, returning uh, punts. So I feel like uh, it, it's just question marks. It's not so much, oh, my gosh, we don't have anybody. It's, it's just that we, those guys got to go out and just perform. Now, on offense, the big question has been who's the starter going to be. And I don't – I've heard you say this time and time again, and I think it's probably going to hold true at least for the first couple games. Mm -hmm. is Andrew Manley and Jalen Whitlow both will play. Mm -hmm. Who the starter is is just maybe how you guys feel the first series that you want to put out there. Right. Who is best equipped for that? Well, we have a plan right now. We know who's going out first, and the kids know who know, who's going out first. And they, and they uh, also have a, a pretty good idea of uh, – uh, you know, when those changes will be made as far as if we do uh, interject, uh, you know, the other one into the game, which I would like to do. I, I'm a defensive coordinator by trade. Yeah. I look at people and I say, okay, I've got to compare or prepare for two quarterbacks. And they're pretty distinct differences, but they both run the entire offense. So that's something that you, as a defensive coordinator, you know, you, you better know who's in the game. Uh, and don't be surprised if, you know, maybe they both are in the game at the same time. You never know. Now, we will look at Minnesota a little bit, and I told you we'd do it very broadly when we do these <laughs> coaches shows. You probably have looked at them, and when you guys do early on, and as you do most times through the, season, through the season, when you do scouting reports, it's based on numbers. The one number on offense that as a defensive guy has probably popped out to you is their running back, David Cobb. And mm -hmm. I don't do numbers. I do names, coach. Yeah, so. yeah I, well, I, you know, I'm not – I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm especially going into a season – you know, you're not big on numbers e either because different things change. I mean, they have, you know, different may – maybe a couple different offensive linemen. They have a different quarterback. They have a different – you know, so the dynamic of what they're trying to do, and I know that they've, you know, put out a lot that, you know, they're trying to uh, improve their passing game. And they worked really hard on that this spring and in the fall, which is fine. I hope that's where they spent their time. But uh, when it gets down to it, they are – going to line up and they are going to try to big boy us uh, this is a big 10 football team don't don't make any mistake yeah. about that they got a 227 pound tailback that uh is is a bull and uh, they are up front they're huge and they're very physical so uh those are the things that you know we expect going in anything else other than that um you know we we can't really spend a lot of time worrying about we've got to go in with the understanding that uh, we better be able to stop big boy football if we want to have a chance to win now, on the defensive side of the ball for Minnesota, they lost two key playmakers to the NFL draft. Mm -hmm. Is that an area where I, they're always going to be able to have a guy to reload in that position? But are those areas that, that may be a little bit of a weakness for them going into the season? Well, I, you know, as far as a weakness and things like that, I don't know. Uh, I know this. Uh, they've got two defensive ends that are excellent football players, and they've got two corners that can play. Uh, I, I think, you know, going in, that's the things that they've been talking about is, is their defensive ends and their corners, and and uh, you know plus they're big up front. They're, you know their linebackers are are big kids, and and uh, you know obviously they're gonna have they're having to replace a couple of like you said NFL guys. But um, in a Big Ten program, most of the time you have a guy that's ready to go. It's a pretty darn good football player. So we're expecting uh, all eleven of them to be pretty good. To be honest with you. All right, Coach, well, best of luck. A reminder, that'll be at 6 o'clock. You can hear that game on the Panther Football Radio Network. Mike Brad will have the pregame show at 5.30. The broadcast is on the Big Ten Network, so hopefully everybody will watch that. Hopefully you're listening to the game on the radio instead so you can hear our version of the call. <laughs> Good luck to Coach in his first game out there, and we look forward to having him here all season with us. We'll be right back with this week in EIU Athletics. Thanks for watching Panther Sports Talk. He's going to throw it deep down the middle. Wide open, Gober. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Big hole, little stumbling across the 15, 10. Nobody there. Touchdown, Shepard Little. Eastern Illinois Panther football is on WEIU. Can the Panthers make it three OBC championships in a row? Who will be under center replacing second round NFL draft pick Jimmy Garoppolo? And the Panthers will be guided by first year head coach Kim Dameron. It's Eastern Illinois Panther football coming in September to WEIU. Panther fans, here's what's going on in Panther athletics. Women's soccer starts the 2014 season 0-2 after losses at Northern Kentucky 4-0 and against Indiana State 2-0 at Lakeside Field. Men's soccer with their final exhibition match before the 2014 season starts. They were victorious at Illinois Springfield 1-0. Now here's what to watch for this week. On Thursday, Panther football kicks off the Kim Dameron era at EIU as the Panthers open up at Big Ten Foe, Minnesota. The game is set for 6 p.m. You can listen to it on HitMix 88.9 WEIU or watch it on the Big Ten Network. 
On Friday, women's soccer continues play as they host a weekend tournament at Lakeside Field. The Panthers will play against Marshall at 1 p.m. Volleyball gets their 2014 season underway as they begin play at the Ball State Tournament in Muncie, Indiana. The Panthers will play Northern Colorado at 4.30. On Saturday, volleyball with two more matches at the Ball State Tourney. They will take on the host Cardinals of Ball State at 10.30 in the morning and then take on Western Illinois at 4.30 p.m. Women's Rugby begins their 2014 season with a 1 p.m. match at the Wisconsin All-Stars. And men's soccer opens up their season at Lakeside Field against St. Francis, Illinois at 2 p.m. On Sunday, women's soccer wraps up their weekend tourney at Lakeside Field with a 1 p.m. match against Louisiana Tech. And on Monday, men's soccer with another non-conference match at Lakeside Field as they take on Lipscomb at 2. Reporting for Panther Sports Talk, I'm Brad Kupiak. Going to give it to Duncan straight ahead. Dives over the top. WEIU is your home for Eastern Illinois Panther football. There's the pressure, they block it. They block it at the five. It's rolling free at the end zone. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Panther football greats. Garoppolo rolling out to his right. Pumpe steps up, looking, throwing the bomb. Going for Gober, back of the end zone. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. WEIU is your home for Panther football. Welcome back to Panther Sports Talk. Drag Nick Borey, the junior center out of class here. He's waving to the crowd. I apologize. It's hot out here, as you can tell. If you don't see the heat coming off the, the ground as we get ready to head up to Minnesota, you'll definitely see the sweat on our face by the time it gets done. But, Nick, one of the big questions in camp, and you're the center, so we kind of took this angle with you, is who's going to be the starting quarterback? And while I'm not going to ask you to, to name whether it's going to be Jalen Whitlow or Andrew Manley, I guess tell me a little bit about what each of them maybe does a little bit differently that's going to make you guys have two weapons this year. Uh, well, to begin with, we've had Andrew since the spring last year, and he's the typical stand in the pocket, and he will throw all over the defense, and he will tear him apart with his arm. Uh, we love him. He's a great guy, great family guy. Um, Jalen came in uh, this past spring, transferred in, and uh, he's a runner. He can take the ball, and he can run just like any running back, and we're proud to block for him, and we're happy for him. So we definitely do have two styles of offense this year with two different guys, and we're really excited to throw both of them at Minnesota. Now, you talk about that from an offensive line standpoint. You guys, it will make you have different assignments. Is, is there one as an offensive lineman, a style that I guess you prefer, not necessarily a quarterback, but a style that you prefer as an offensive lineman? Uh, well, we prefer to never have a quarterback get hit either way. So when Jalen runs the ball, we don't like it, but it gives us an opportunity to really – hit the defensive lineman harder than we've ever hit before. As in Manly, we kind of you know pass up more often and sit back there and protect him as long as we can. So it's a little bit different, but it's very exciting either way. Now also a different offensive style for you guys. Gone is Coach Babers and his offensive staff. In comes Coach Dameron and offensive coordinator Greg Stevens, who also runs a hurry up. And I don't think, I think the video game numbers last year, and I've heard that quote from several people, it's not just me making it up. Uh, we're so far out of reach compared to where a lot of teams were, but you look at what Coach Stevens did at Southeast Louisiana and his track record, and you guys aren't going to fall off tremendously in terms of point production and yardage. Correct. I mean, the way you got to look at it is football's football. You run the ball and you pass the ball. We still have our hurry-up offense that we had last year. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different, obviously, because we have the new coaches, but still fast-paced, hard-hitting, scoring touchdowns. That's what we're going to do. Now, you guys bring in a veteran offensive line coach and Mike Marcuson, who has coached some guys. And one of the names that a lot of people have heard is the blind side, the, the young man, Michael Orr. So he's, he's got some knowledge. It's got to be a good resource for you as an offensive lineman to be able to kind of pick his brain a little bit. Oh, to, to be with Coach Marcuson is, is huge. He's a great guy. He really gets after us. He knows how to push us. And he's got technique that is flawless. Um, coming in with him, it's just – it's, a, it's really exciting for me personally just to be coached by a guy that's, you know, he knows it all. He's a great coach. Now, part of the offensive line is really the theory is to gel during the course of the season. The best, the better that you guys can gel, the faster you can gel. Usually the more successful the offensive line is. Last year, two new guys in the starting offensive unit, and that was you as the starting center at San Diego State and Jimmy Lowry. I guess take us a little bit about through that scenario and how that situation was your first college game as a starter and you guys get a big win at San Diego State that was huge I, I can't lie I was pretty nervous obviously for my first start and we had a lot of good guys behind us and with us and we pulled out the win and it's going to be the same for the two new starters this year that we have uh, can Evan Cans to the right of me and then Adolphus Barnes at the left tackle 
and we're going up to Minnesota on Big Ten Network, and we're all very excited to, to go out and hit people. Now, you talk about that. Evan Cannes got some snaps last year. He kind of was a versatile guy. Him and Eric Lurson have battled for that spot, and it looks like Evan has kind of pulled away here the last couple days heading into the week. You have Adolphus Barnes out at the other tackle. It, they're both crucial positions, but from a, a center who's the kind of the quarterback, which of the two are you? do you feel you're going to have to do a little bit more coaching in that unit to make sure that you guys are successful? Um, honestly, my favorite part about these two guys that are up right now is that I, I trust them fully, both of them. Um, Evan is right next to me, so he's a little more crucial to me just because of position-wise, he's literally right next to me. And then uh, Adolphus out to the left has Colin, who's a you know a four-year starter now. So I have a lot of faith in Colin helping him out. And then uh, on the inside, it's, it'll be me and Evan. Now, one of the other questions I've always thought about for centers, and it's a little bit different for you guys, is you don't ever ask you what's your preference and type of defense you play. I mean, you guys will play four threes, you play three fours, some other scenarios from there. As a center, is there one that you kind of are happier to type to, to play? Does it make your life a little bit easier maybe to have, is it one guy straight ahead of you than the three four that's good? Or do you like the four three because you're going to have some help? Uh, I like going against the four three defense just because it allows me to pick on the little linebackers. So that's that's fun. <laughs> Uh, the head-up nose is also fun just because I, I can prove to myself and everybody else that, you know, with snapping the ball, I can, you know, beat the guy right up in front of me. Now, we talk about the Jimmy Garoppolo's, the Eric Lores, and you guys were part of that success, too. I know they got a lot of the accolades. The offensive line was crucial to that in terms of giving Jimmy time to connect with Eric and the other guys. But you guys, other than losing Jimmy and Eric, you have a lot of weapons coming back, and I think people overlook how good the run game was with Taylor Duncan and Shepard Little, and you guys are a big part of that. Yeah, I mean, last year against uh, Jacksonville State, we broke our Eastern rushing record. We had three backs, and we had four backs returning, and all phenomenal backs. Taylor Duncan can will run people over, and Shepard will just outrun everybody. We have backups, too, that can fill in a spot just like that, and we're very excited to run the ball. All right, and last question I'll make a little fun for you. Favorite, favorite superhero, is that Batman? Is that why this is the shirt for the first day of school? True. I have to be, always be Batman. If you can be Batman, you always got to be Batman. All right, a reminder, you can watch Nick and the rest of the EIU Panthers in action on Thursday night, 6 o'clock up at Minnesota. We'll be right back with more Panther Sports Talk right here on WIU. Two-step drop, throwing the fade, going for break, and he's got it. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Your home for Eastern Illinois Panther football, WEIU, presents Panther Sports Talk. Host Rich Moser sits down with first-year head coach Kim Dameron throughout the football season as the Panthers look to make it three OBC championships in a row. Panther Sports Talk will also feature football game highlights and features on select EIU athletes. Join us Wednesday at 6.30 on WEIU. Buddy, buddy. 
Production for Panther Sports Talk is brought to you in part by the following supporters of WEIU.